What is going on, Op Warriors? It's your boy, Edward V. And boy, let's go ahead and talk about this study that was just released on September 28th. 2020. Major news online outlets took to this story and I definitely have to break this down. So of course I'm going to go ahead and break it down in this video. Stay tuned. Alright guys, quickly before we start, this video is brought to you by yours truly, Fledge Fitness and the Fledge Fitness Jump Rope. If you haven't gotten yours yet, what are you waiting for? With an ergonomic design, aluminum handle, and swivel design, you can't go wrong with the Fledge Fitness Jump Rope. Only $16.50, you can click on the top right hand corner of this video or down in the description box below. And of course, as always guys, thank you for your support. Now, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. Major news publicized study of intermittent fasting has dropped. Uh, New York Times, Insider, Yahoo News, CNBC, New York Post. Everyone's jumping on this study. Why? Because the results of the study are very polarizing, especially when intermittent fasting was the most popular diet in 2019. So before I even dive into this study, I do want to let you guys know that all studies have value. All studies are data. Data is incredibly important. The more data we have, the more accurate or the better meta-analysis in the future can be when all of that data is synthesized and we get a more accurate result on what's more likely going to happen to the average person when embarking on any specific protocol, in this instance, intermittent fasting. So even with this study, I appreciate the study for the fact that it is data. Now, there are massive flaws in this study not particularly with how they execute it, but just on the methodology alone. But that does not discount that this still gives us data and information on if this type of methodology is followed, what can be the possible outcomes. But keep in mind that this is an individual study and not even the most powerful individual intermittent fasting study that we have and not even close to the most powerful intermittent fasting study that we have, which is a meta-analysis, and I'll get into that as soon as I explain this study here. Now, the study was a 12-week study that contained 116 adults. It was randomized, which is good, and it was split between two groups, the control arm and the intermittent fasting arm. So, a control group and an intermittent fasting group. So, it was randomized and controlled, which is great. But the major issue with this study is that all participants were able to eat ab libitum. Now, if you don't know what ab libitum means, is that you can eat as much and whatever you like. So it's not isocaloric, is not controlling for macronutrients, and is not controlling for protein intake. So all of that is already out the window from the get-go with this study. Now, with that being said, the intermittent fasting group lost more weight, but it was not significantly different from the control group who ate three structured meals throughout the day, while the intermittent fasting group ate from 12 to 8 p.m. But before the intermittent fasting crowd jumps up in glory and says, well, there you go, they lost more weight, the weight that was lost from the intermittent fasting group was actually lean tissue, which means muscle mass was lost. And the lean tissue loss was significantly different. So fat loss was not significantly different lean tissue loss was significantly different and that is where they're seeing the difference in the weight loss overall so basically the study is showing that in terms of weight difference calorie restriction and intermittent fasting isn't different in terms of muscle loss intermittent fasting provides greater muscle loss based on this study design. But here's the thing with the study. Now, like I said, it's still data. What does this tell us? What does this, what does this particular study show us? Well, we've had other studies where they allowed the intermittent fasting group 
and the control group to eat ad libitum. And we've seen positive results for the intermittent fasting group where they lost more fat than the control group and they retained their muscle as well. But those are also individual studies. What this individual study is telling us that based on this particular study, that if allowed to eat without any type of control in terms of calorie control, protein intake, macronutrient control, that a group that does intermittent fasting from 12 to 8, which was considered time-restricted feeding, can have the potential to reduce muscle. Now, because they did not control for the protein intake, macronutrient intake, and calorie intake, we don't know exactly what they were or were not eating and how much they were or were not eating. And so this is a confounding variable that's incredibly important to an outcome like reduced lean tissue because intermittent fasting will not protect muscle tissue on its own you still need to have adequate protein intake you still need to do things like resistance training you don't know how much of the control group was doing resistance training while the other group may have not been doing resistance training please understand also that this was an observational study although it was a cohort it was observational which means that you can live your life do whatever you like so if one group tends to work out more and the other group tends not to work out more that can be a huge variable to why one group lost more lean tissue than the other if one group eats more protein than the other that is a variable to why one group lost more lean tissue than the other but this study can highlight that there is importance to creating structure even if you're doing something like intermittent fasting. A lot of people would like to use intermittent fasting as a get out of jail free card where they can do whatever they like. They can eat whatever they like. That is true to an extent in terms of being at a caloric deficit, not having to think too much about a caloric deficit. But if you want to protect muscle or make sure that you're losing an adequate amount of weight, you do have to account for things like protein intake and calorie consumption because calories 100% matter regardless of intermittent fasting or not. What intermittent fasting helps you with is your calorie expenditure partitioning, the energy substrate, burning more fat because of the ketone bodies as opposed to burning other parts of your body, but you still need to supply it with the adequate amount of macronutrients. But even with that being said, please understand how data and studies work. This is a single study looking at 116 people with a flawed design innate to the study because it is observational and allows them to eat how much and what they like. One added note that you can take out of this that's positive with intermittent fasting that continues to be the trend with all of these ad libitum studies is that the people crying from the rooftop saying that if you do intermittent fasting, you're going to overeat because you're just always hungry is absolutely false as this ad libitum study, which allows people just eat as much as you like, shows that people still do not overeat because of hunger. When they break their fast, they just go through the entire kitchen when in an intermittent fasting protocol. Meta-analysis are more important than individual studies. And if we went into individual studies, controlled studies that are randomized and also control for the calorie intake and macronutrients especially protein are more rigorous and hold more qualitative weight than a study that doesn't control for macronutrients and calorie intake from the many studies that we have there are so many that control for this that show an increased fat loss in intermittent fasting versus just caloric restriction. There's even a metabolic chamber study. And if you don't know what a metabolic chamber study is, it's a study where the participants are in a chamber, a metabolic chamber, and cannot come out. All the actual foods are given to them. So the researchers know exactly how much they're eating and exactly how much they're not eating. They even control for exercise by keeping them sedentary all across the board equally and they can't go home to their families they're stuck there under 24 hour supervision and there is a metabolic chamber study with intermittent fasting that shows greater fat oxidation throughout the 24 hour period for the intermittent fasting group versus the controlled three meal a day group where they control for calories and they control for protein intake as well as an increased energy expenditure 
in the intermittent fasting group. Remember, they didn't do extra exercise or anything like that. They were kept sedentary just like the control group. So that's an individual study that has more rigor because it's controlled. However, it was only seen in a 24 hour frame. So we understand it's still one study. It gives good data because of how rigorous it is, but it's just one study. What's more important is that the most prestigious study that was done in September of 2019, funny, just a year to this study releasing, was a meta-analysis study, which is a study of studies. It takes the breadth of the studies that we had, it actually looked at over 5,000 intermittent fasting studies, whittled it down to 12 because it controlled tightly for calorie control, protein intake control, having a control arm to compare and contrast, as well as having an intermittent fasting group or arm to compare and contrast. So it's the most rigorous meta-analysis that we have. And what did they find in that study? They found that fat loss tend to increase in the intermittent fasting group. These are all of the intermittent fasting studies that we have out there that are rigorous, that were being synthesized, that showed this outcome. Insulin resistance was reduced. Although this new study is showing that there's no metabolic benefits in this, in the meta-analysis, however, that is not the case. There's an increase in adiponectin, there is an, a reduction in BMI, and there is a higher fat loss tendency in the intermittent fasting groups. So please understand that because a study is new and because outlets choose to pick this study and popularize it, does not automatically make it the best data that we have. Is it still data? Absolutely. Is it even close? To the best data even on an individual study basis absolutely not is it even close to the best data period 100 no because there's a meta analysis that already exists and i will go ahead and link that down in the description box below that you can check out for yourself that synthesizes all of the other studies and comes out with the results that intermittent fasting does indeed have a benefit for fat loss BMI reduction, insulin resistance, adiponectin increase, et cetera, et cetera, when controlled and looking at multiple studies, not just one paper. So hopefully this video has helped you guys and enlightened you guys on how to look at studies when moving forward in case you ever see this, because I did get a lot of messages like, oh my God, Edward, you have to look at this. What's going on? Just because a study is new does not make it better in terms of how they acquired that data. Please keep that in mind. And I'm not ever even going to jump into uh, it being because of you know companies or whatever. I'm never interested in that kind of conversation because of the fact that just to get on these journals, you have to go through three peer reviews. It has to be looked at by different researchers not involved and they have to approve it and then it has to be published on a prestigious journal. There's so many hurdles that you have to jump that I don't care to even kind of entertain that argument. The more important thing for me is what does the data say and how did they do the methodology? The methodology to me is very important, but of course, data is data and this is something that can enlighten us on what happens when you just do intermittent fasting without any type of regimen or protocol and of course as always i want to thank my patrons for my patreon and i'm going to go ahead and put their names right up here As always, guys, I'll see you on Sunday for another FAQ. Peace!